Hey guys, my name is Ryan Central and last week I had the opportunity to play Flak. I got some other bits and pieces, so if you are interested in more new Borderlands gameplay, then do definitely subscribe. But today I wanted to focus on Flak and the 9 pet variations slash evolutions the Flak can have. We'll also be going over Flak's abilities, the skill trees and the playstyle surrounding them, and some other bits and pieces. Flak, much like all of the other Vault Hunters, has three different skill trees. In these skill trees, Flak has three different pets that he can choose from. In Hunter Tree, you have the Spider Ant. In the Stalker Tree, you have the Jabber. And in the Master Tree, you have a Skag. Not only do these pets, you know, attack nearby enemies when you have them out, each of them have their own unique passives that improve stuff like fire rate, movement speed, maximum health, and health regen. But each of them have their own attack commands, their own set of abilities, which are used by hovering your reticle over an enemy and then holding down the ability button, like I'm showing you on screen. When you invest into these skill trees, if you pay attention on the right hand side, you have a set of augments, which are special skills that you can attach to your pets that evolve them into doing much more. You can unlock stronger, more involved versions of the basic pets that we've just gone over. Each of them look entirely different, they all look amazing, but they each have their own passives and abilities that you can use and play in certain playstyles. We'll start with a spider ant first that's in the hunter tree. And when you have this pet out, you will constantly regenerate health as a passive. It works out apparently at about 1% of your max health per second, but bear in mind that the game isn't out yet. I guess technically it's still in beta. So some of this stuff is subject to change right now. So that's the passive that you have when you have the spider ant out as a pet. And the attack command that you can issue to the spider ant will cause the spider ant to charge the enemy that you flagged. It's fairly straightforward stuff, but you don't need to spend any skill points to have any of these pets out. Not to mention that you can fully invest in say the master tree but still have the spider ant from the hunter tree. You don't need to worry about locking yourself out of using certain pets. But like I said as you invest into the hunter tree you will eventually unlock two new versions of the spider ant evolving it into something much more. The first of which is the spider ant scorcher which will occasionally deal fire damage to nearby enemies like I'm showing you on screen but it will also improve your passive. You'll keep the regenerating health that you had before, still at 1% of your max health, but you'll also gain elemental resistance. The attack command for this pet is that the Scorcher will still charge at enemies like before. This version of the pet isn't too much more exciting. If you have a build around doing fire damage, then it might be quite cool. Or if you're taking a lot of elemental damage from a specific enemy, this might be the pet's pick, but it's fairly straightforward. The next version of the pet is the Countess which again, will keep you regenerating health as a passive, but you'll also gain 5% damage reduction across the board. The attack command is also very different. The Countess will now burrow underground and then emerge at the enemy that you flagged, dealing corrosive damage in an area. A very nice pet if you want to reduce the amount of damage that you're taking and to make sure that you've constantly got that health going too. But as we get into the other pets, you'll start to see some other builds really come into the forefront, especially as we get into the Jabba pet in the Stalker Tree. The basic version of the Jabba sidekick carries around a pistol, so will do damage from a distance. And whilst you have this pet out as a passive, you will have increased movement speed of 5%. The attack command for the Jabba is also pretty cool. When you flag an enemy, the Jabba will throw a radiation barrel as I'm showing you on screen, doing damage to those nearby. As you invest into the stock tree, you will eventually come across the Beefcake Jabba. This version of the Jabba discards the pistol and equips a shotgun instead, and you will gain the movement speed that you had before, as well as a maximum health increase of 10%. The attack commands the Beefcake will summon a melee weapon to deliver a powerful attack that knocks enemies back. So this is very much a tanky melee build for a pet. If you find yourself dying too much whilst your pet is fine, this is a great way to get a bit more focus fire on the Jabba instead of you, especially if you're built like a glass cannon. This is now a good time to talk about your pets dying. They can get downed, you can revive them in that state, but if you fail to do that, they will be unusable for about a minute until they respawn again. Can they revive you is a question that I often see and the answer is yes but you need to invest into a specific talent like the wounds which you can find in the stalker tree. Otherwise, they're just gonna leave you for dead. But finally, the last Jabba that I wanted to go over is the Gunslinger. Instead of having a pistol or shotgun, this version of the Jabba will have an SMG. And whilst you have this pet out, you'll have the same 5% movement speed, but it will also increase your critical hit damage. If you're building for like a sniper, that's pretty good. The attack command is also incredible. The Gunslinger will equip a rocket launcher to attack a target. Just check it out, just watch. It's beautiful. Like I said, if you're building for crit damage, which you can do 
as black, then this is a really good pet to have out at the same time. But finally, we have three different pet variations to go over now, and you can find them in the master tree. We're talking about the Gad Skag now. The passive is that it increases your overall damage by 5%, which in itself is pretty good for a basic version of a pet. And the attack command will have the Skag vomiting out acid onto the target, of course doing corrosive damage to those nearby. A really strong pet to have out to begin with in regards to doing as much damage as possible, but from my own personal experience, the Skag got downed the most. So do bear that in mind. As you progress through the Master Tree, you will eventually unlock the Great Horned Skag on the right hand side, where you'll keep your 5% damage passive from the Skag, but also gain an extra 10% in gun damage. This Skag as an attack command will also charge at enemies and knock them into the air, which is really good for CCing. Not amazing, but it's certainly not a bad one to have if you want it. And the final pet that we are left to go over is the Iridian Skag, which looks amazing. This increases your damage by 5%, same as all of the other Skags, but also will increase your fire rate by 5%. The attack command will pull nearby enemies in by generating a singularity of the pet. Really hard to sort of see how this works, but here's some gameplay on screen if you want to check it out. I didn't get much time to try out each of the different pets. I had to restart this part of the game three times in order to be able to show them all off. But from playing each of the pets early game, I liked all of them really. Each of them suited a certain play style. If you felt like survivability was a problem, then the spider ant's good. If you wanted to increase all of the damage that you could do, then the skag's really nice. Honestly feels like you're playing with somebody else at that point. Hell, I'd even say that the Jabba's better than half the players that I play Borderlands with, so so there is that. Now that we've gone over the pets, let's have a look at the abilities. Flat can choose from three abilities, one of each in the skill trees. Going over Hunter first, we have Flak Attack, which is a nice straightforward ability. You send forward two racks to dive bomb enemies. I believe it sets them on fire and it has multiple charges. You can fire it out twice. The cooldown is also very short, only 18 seconds. And it's really good for being able to burst down, say, badasses really quickly. You can instantly fire both charges if you wanted, as well as getting more augments to get additional racks. You can send out five in total if you spec for it that way, as an example. The Stalker ability is Fade away which works very similar to Zero's ability. You cloak, you turn invisible and when you shoot an enemy it does 200% critical hit damage. But unlike Zero, instead of firing it once, Flat can fire three times whilst cloaked. Once he fires the third time, he decloaks. But whilst he is invisible, he has increased movement speed of 25%, as well as health regeneration of about 3% of the max health per second. The ability lasts 15 seconds with a cooldown of 45. And the final ability, which is the most ridiculous, is Gamma Burst in the Master Tree. Flat creates a rift at a target location, wherever you're aiming. It teleports your pet through the the rift and deals radiation damage in that area. When the pet goes through the rift, it becomes irradiated, it grows inside, and it deals bonus radiation damage when it attacks. The duration of this ability is 20 seconds with a cooldown of 30, so it's not too bad. However, it does have another use. If your pet gets downed or dies, you can use this ability to revive the pet with 30% of its health. The kickback to that though, however, is that it will double your action skill cooldown time from 30 seconds to a minute. So if there's five seconds left to wait until your pet respawns, don't use this ability. You can mix and match whatever pets that you want with whatever abilities. It doesn't cost any skill points. So say for example, you can spend all of your skill points in the stalker tree. However, you can have the spider ant out as a pet from the hunter tree and the gamma burst ability from the master tree. And that's where flak strength really lies. You can mix and match a lot of the pets, the abilities with different skills and augments, and it just makes them so much fun to play. Are they as good as you were hoping? They definitely exceeded my expectations. So probably the same with you as well. If you are excited with playing flak, you're gonna have a lot of fun. Finally, what are the main ways that you can play Flak? I wanna go through each of the skill trees and talk about the general playstyles that you're gonna have. Like I said, generalized, so we're not getting into specifics or we'd be here all day. But for example, if we start with the Hunter tree, this is definitely more focused around a sniper slash fight from a distance with a hard hitting weapon kind of build. There's a lot of focus on critical hits, either doing more damage or hitting a target twice, 
Or for example, the main talent in this tree, the top tier one, Megavor, which gives you a 20% chance to score a critical hit, even if you shoot them in the big toe, you'll be able to do critical hit damage. So there's a lot of focus on fighting from a distance, using sniper rifles or hard hitting revolvers as an example, but mostly being stationary and letting your pet take the brunt of the damage. Going on to the stalker tree, this is more of a rogue archetype. Of course you have the fade away stealth ability, but there's a lot of focus on health regen, moving around for added bonuses. This is the build and this is the playstyle where you constantly want to be moving as flak, as opposed to hunter, where you want to be staying very still. All about getting your skills up as much as possible, having consistent uptime, those kind of areas, if I was to sum it up very quickly at least. But of course you can get some of the talents from Stalker, mix it in with Hunter and get something in between. And finally Master, this is the World of Warcraft Hunter kind of build with a lot of focus on the synergy between you and your pet. For example, when you take damage, you share that damage with your pet. Or when you do damage to an enemy, it heals your pet and vice versa. A lot of synergy on increasing the damage that your pet does, but also again making sure that you and your pet are as tanky as possible. If you want to have more of a deep dive into that in another video, let me know in the comments below. But that's everything that I wanted to go over today, really focusing on Flax pets, the passives and the abilities that you will have available to you. I hope you enjoyed this video, I can't wait to do more Borderlands content. So thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you very soon.